Hello again and welcome to another organic chemistry lab. Today we're going to be doing the electrophilic substitution reaction. Um, we're going to be reacting some bromobenzene, so we're going to do the nitration of bromobenzene and also a tin layer chromatography test with um, some column chromatography tests as well. So I'll get straight into the lab. I've already went ahead and set up majority of the parameters. Um, normally we do this lab in a two-part series so students would work um, about three hours on the first lab session and then another two hours on the second lab session. So I might end up doing this video in a two-part series. So the first part is the nitration reaction. So I already have my bromobenzene, my concentrated sulfuric acid, concentrated nitric acid. So I'll just add that sulfuric acid first to our own bottom flask. Set up in some cold water. That's four ml of sulfuric acid. And then I'll slowly add four ml of nitric acid. This will produce an exothermic reaction, so we want to keep it cool and add it slowly over time. Okay, so now that we've finished adding the two acids, I have here 3 grams of bromobenzene solution. This is 99% pure bromobenzene. So over a period of 10 minutes, I'm going to go adding slowly some of the bromobenzene until I've added all. And again, I'll keep it in the cold water bath, keep swirling and cooling after each addition. So I'll just do small amounts over the period of 10 minutes. Okay, so we've reached about that 10 minute mark. I've completely added all the room benzene. And as we continue cooling, if you look here, you can see some of the product is already crystallizing. So what we now do is connect it to this apparatus. And we're going to warm this up to a bit below 60 degrees Celsius. And we want to keep it at that temperature for about 60 minutes. Now this time we want to make sure the bulb of the thermometer is touching the reaction mixture because that is the temperature we want. We want the temperature of that reaction mixture maintained at below 60 degrees Celsius.
So I'm just gonna monitor this temperature and I'll come back again when we warm this for 15 minutes. Okay, so we can turn off the water. We maintain this solution between 50 and 60 degrees Celsius for about 15 minutes now. So I'll just raise the apparatus. And then I'll allow this to cool to room temperature on its own. So I'll just leave it flat here and let that cool to room temperature. Okay, so we've allowed the solution to cool down to room temperature. So we have some of the crystals all around the glass. And what I'll do, I'll add whatever remaining solution and the crystals to 40 ml of ice cold water. And I'll just use this scoop to scrape out the other crystals off the edge. to get as much as possible and from here we're going to move on to the vacuum filtration process all right so let's move on to vacuum filter So another key concept that you'll be exploring for the first time in this lab is the use of the vacuum filtration process. So what we have here is a vacuum pump. Um, we're using Buchner funnels. So these are large funnels. They're perforated. You can see the little holes inside. And normally that goes inside a vacuum flask. So they're just conical flasks with an extra hose adapter we get a piece of filter paper these ones come pretty much standard size to fit in the Buchner funnel now when you place the filter paper inside the Buchner funnel you want to make sure the filter paper covers all of those little perforated holes that way when you filter through the solids don't pass through but the liquid passes into the vacuum flask and then you can dry the solids and collect those in the end. So let's start the vacuum pump. Now important what I always warn students about is when you're vacuum filtering you don't want to let the flask fill too high. If water gets inside the pump it could spoil the vacuum so you don't want it to go too high and when you're pouring out you also want to pour away from the holes. So I'll turn on. Now we 
just going to add this solution. And we want to collect all the crystals. Pause and let's test. bit longer and we should be good enough to move on. Okay, so we've dried the crystals a bit under vacuum filtration. Now we're going to go and weigh the crystals. We want to make sure we get an accurate mass of the crystals so we can move on to the next part. So I'll move over to the scale. Just try to get the filter paper up and transfer mm -hmm. all the crystals onto the petri dish.
Okay. Okay, so we collected 3.94 grams of bromonitrobenzene. Now for the next step, we're gonna dissolve that in a matching amount of ethanol. So for every gram of bromonitrobenzene that we got is one ml of ethanol. So we're just gonna use four ml of ethanol to dissolve this into a homogeneous solution and then we'll recrystallize once more. Okay, so we have our bromonitrobenzene. I've measured out about four ml of ethanol. So I'm just gonna add the ethanol. And I want to heat and stir and break this down into an almost homogeneous mixture. So we just crush and we mix. We want to make this solution into almost a pasty-like mixture. Oh, we're adding some heat. The bromonitrobenzene has this sweet, pleasant odor. So that's often times a nice odor to smell from this lab. I wouldn't recommend you inhaling it too much though. Okay, so that's pretty good. And now we move on to cool and recrystallize this over an ice bath. So I have a block of ice here. First, I'll let this space cool to room temperature, and then I'll cool it down to zero degrees Celsius on this block of ice before we move on to then recrystallizing and washing again with the vacuum filter and this time we're going to wash with ethanol instead of water so i'll just let this cool then ice and then wash again so we have cooled down to room temperature this is how the crystals look now i'm just going to cool on the ice bath for a bit we go ahead and we start washing with some ice cold ethanol. Now all these recrystallizations are important. You want to make sure we get the purest product and the O and the P bromonitrobenzene they separate.
for the mother. Put a little paper inside and open our funnel. Turn on the vacuum. we collect here as a filter this time is our model liqueur so we want to save that model liqueur for the following steps that will come We've allowed the crystal to dry and drain into that model liqueur. So again, we move to go and weigh. And this time, I'm going to show you what we do to get the melting point. So after I'm finished weighing, I'll show you the melting point apparatus and how we determine that. Okay. So we've collected about 2.02 grams of the bromonitrobenzene crystals. So now for the melting point. Now we don't have any high-tech melting point apparatus. What I use are just capillary tubes. So I have some very small capillary tubes here. This one, if you look closely, we've sealed off the tip at one end and then the other end is open. So in this open end, we're just gonna tap and collect. About a centimeter depth, 
of solid. So you can see the solid inside. And we take a larger capillary tube, sit on the ground and just if we just drop towards the seal end, the solid will move to that end of the capillary tube. So we just do that several times. Till we get that solid out to the bottom. There you go. So with just gravity, we've gotten all of that solid to the bottom of this capillary tube. We get a normal thermometer and a rubber band. And we just attach that tube to the thermometer. And what we're then going to do is I'm going to lower this into the hot water bath and while simultaneously observing the solid inside the tube and the temperature, we're going to find out at what temperature that solid melts. So you'll just see when the solid liquefies and we're going to read off the temperature which it occurs. Okay, we have some melting occurring and we're at about 114. Let's make sure everything melts. Yep, 115 degrees Celsius. So at about 115 degrees Celsius, all that crystal melt. So let's move on. The model liquor from the previous step we have here inside a beaker. We're just going to evaporate the solution down to about 10 ml of liquid and after we've evaporated it down to about 10 ml we're going to leave it to cool slowly to room temperature and we should get a second crop of crystals so while it's cooling it should recrystallize some more of the bromonitra benzene and then we'll re recrystallize and we'll rewash again at the vacuum filter the mother liqueur to cool to room temperature after evaporating it to 10 ml and then we cool it in the ice bath once more so here we have a second crop of the P bromonitra benzene so more crystals so we're now going to repeat the vacuum filtration and the washing so that we can again separate the liquid which will contain the O and the solid which is the P bromonitra benzene
so I have a bit more solid I'm gonna go add this and wait to the other amount of the solid which is the pebromonitra benzene and I also have some more mother liqueur a second crop now with this what we're then going to do is take this this should be a little over 10 ml and we're going to evaporate down to about 4 ml and once we evaporate down to about 4 ml we should get an oil farming which we will, we will separate with the micro pipette and that should be our old bromonitra benzene So we're almost at our desired volume. We'll just allow a little bit more to evaporate off and then we'll leave the solution to cool and an oil should separate containing the obromonitra benzene. Okay, so we return for day two of the experiment nitration of bromobenzene. So you remember the product that would have contained our obromonitrobenzene, we've evaporated it down. That yellow liquid that we had at 10 ml, we evaporated it down to a little below 10, so about 5 ml. And if you look closely, you can start seeing that oil separate. So that yellow liquid that we had turned a bit more cloudy and you can see the yellow oil separating here at the bottom. Now this oil is what actually contains the obromonitra benzene. That is the product we want. So what I'll do now, I'll leave this to cool down to room temperature and I'm gonna take my micro pipette and remove all of that oil, separate it into a small test tube and then we can move on to do the column chromatography and the TLC. Now that we've gotten our two products, the O and the P bromonitra benzene, we're now ready to create our TLC plates. So first I'll create a chromatogram. So all you'll need is a beaker, a cover watch glass. We have our TLC plate already marked. So I have a line about a centimeter above and then we want to end about a half centimeter from the top so I have a little markation there for me to know when to stop. I have a P for the spot where we'll put the P bromonitra benzene and an O for where I'll put the O bromonitra benzene. Now the P bromonitra benzene we already dissolved some of that solid that we got before inside some ethyl acetate. So I'll just take this pipette, just want some of the oil to stick, and we'll put a spot, that's for the P, and then for the O, I'll get a micro pipette. I'm going to micro pipette about 200 microliters of the oil. So that's 200 microliters.
and then to that I'm going to add 0.5 ml of ethyl acetate and we mix we can now take our second spotter we're just going to put a tiny spot for the Uber Nitro Benzene Now that both of those are ready, we have some eluent solvent here. I want about 10 ml of eluent. Add that to a clean beaker. Inside will go our TLC plate. We cover with a cover watch glass and we just let that solvent move up the TLC plate. When it reaches about a half centimeter we're gonna stop and then we're going to measure the distance that each of the substances traveled and the distance that the solvent traveled. We have our UV lamp here prepared. Once the TLC plate has dried, we put it on the UV and we're going to circle the spots with a pencil. Now that we've allowed the TLC plate to dry after we've taken out the chromatogram, you can see a slight yellow spot above the first initial spot that we did for the O. So that spot is 1-bromo-2-4-dinitrobenzene. That is another byproduct that we get. So that is dry now. We can now look at the TLC plate under UV lamp. So I'll just get in a bit closer. So we're going to observe on a short wave UV and see where those products ended up. I'll just take a pencil and outline and circle any of the products because it might be a bit difficult for you to see on camera. So we ended at about half a centimeter from the top. Our first spot. For the O. It's just about here. Here's another dark band. Here, a larger band. And another band here. Now for the P, room nitrobenzene. There are fewer bands. Than the O. So only about three bands, and majority of them are a lot smaller than that of the O. So this spot right here is the 1 bromo 24 dinitro benzene. 
This side is for the P bromonitrobenzene. This side is for the O bromonitrobenzene. You can still see the initial spots where we started. And the line at the top is where we ended. Just to take my ruler so you can get some idea of the distance it traveled. So we started, the full distance traveled is about six centimeters. And I'll go ahead and measure each of those spots so you can cal collect and calculate the data for the RF. We're now ready to start the column chromatography section of the lab. So, first thing we need is our burette. Once we have our retort stand and our burette clamp set up, we're going to get a small piece of cotton. Roll that into a ball. And we're going to take one of the long glass rods and push that cotton ball down into the narrowing piece of the neck of the bread. That should stop any sand or silica from falling through. Now we get some sand. And we're going to add about a half centimeter of sand onto that cotton ball. So about that amount should work. Once we have our sand in, I'm then going to take some of the eluent mixture I've already prepared. I'm going to fill the bread up to about a quarter. That's good. And now we need six grams of silica. So the silica gel desiccant is a white powder. We want to make a slur from the silica. So something like a slush, we're going to use the same eluent. And we're going to add to the silica just until it turns sort of smushy looking. You want to be able to pour that silica into the burette. So we have our silica slush going now. For this part, I'll use one of my funnels with the wider nozzle. And I'm just going to pour this silica slush into the brick.
might not get all in, so what I normally do is I take some more diluent. And I could just rinse out as much of that silica as possible. Rinse off, make sure everything gets in. Now we're just going to leave this a while so that all the silica can start to settle. Once all the silica has settled, we're going to put another layer of sand on top of that. So just let's just wait. Let the silica settle by gravity. Okay, the silica has settled. Now we get another amount of sand. So we're going to add another half centimeter cube of sand on top of that silica. Once you've done that, we're going to now run this eluent out until it's just about the level of the sand. So we're going to drain into a beaker, collect that eluent because we can reuse it. So we just drain until about the level of the sand. So we have a 200 microliter pipette. We're going to take some of this P bromonitra benzene up. We have it diluted in some ethyl acetate. And we're just going to add that to the burette. That's good. Now we want to take some of our same eluent solvent. And we're just going to rinse that down with about 0.5 ml of that eluent solvent. So again, the open stop cap and just allow that solvent to drain to about the level of the sand. Okay, so now that that fluid has dropped back to about the level of the sand, and we've added the P bromonitra benzene. We can now fill the bread up with some more eluent solution. And we're gonna start collecting fractions in these small test tubes. So we'll collect fractions for about five to eight mLs. 
and then for every about five fractions we're going to test to see if we've gotten any products so the test that we'll do is the same TLC plate test that you've seen before so about every five fractions or every five test tubes we're going to stop test with a TLC to see if we have product in that fraction and if not then we're going to continue Now what's important in this phase is that we do not let the eluent solvent level drop below the level of the sand. So we're going to keep filling it up. If we go and use too much, fill it up again and continue. Now the rate will be pretty slow. It'll go drop by drop. But like I said, every 5 to 8 ml we stop, start a new tube. And every fifth fraction, we're going to test. So we're at our first fraction, number five. So we're going to take this tube and we're going to test a little bit of this solution with the TLC. If we do not get any results from the TLC, then we discard all of these fractions and we just refill and continue and we'll continue doing this and every five fractions again we test to see if we have any results on the TLC Now we've evaporated off all that eluent. This was from the P benzene. Now it's going to be a bit hard for you to see, but there's a bit of residue that's left inside the beaker. And if you would smell, it gives that same sweet smell that we had before from the P benzene. So if you look closely, you might just see some of that residue at the bottom of the flask. Let me see if I could focus the camera on that. Remember it was not a lot of the P bromonitra benzene that we added, so we don't expect to get a lot of solid back. We're now at about fraction 10. As you can see, the yellow part is almost ready to start coming through. So we should start to get some product soon in these following fractions. There's still a slight yellow band at the top, but the majority of the yellow part containing the obrum and benzene is all the way to the bottom. Right to the left, we have the TLC results for fraction number 20. It's obvious that the product had changed, so there's some tiny spots. And then for the pure oil that we got after evaporating, after we finished the column chromatography, this is the TLC result on the right. After we've evaporated off the eluent from fractions 10 to about 15, so we did quite a few fractions, we happened to get back 
the oil that we expected. So that oil that we have here should be pure O bromonitrobenzene. And that completes our chromatography lab. And thank you again for viewing. I'm sorry the video is so long. And I hope to see you next time.